keep praying for North Carolina. I know Florida was hit again, but that thing just went across, and they're, they're gonna, they'll kick back quick. North Carolina, they're going to have to replat land. Some people lost their um, – they, they didn't lose their home. They lost their property. You know, uh, Johnny Rollett, who's been to this church, has been there for the last week. Uh, and now he's heading to Florida to, to do some things. And I sent Johnny a message, and I even talked to my pastor about the same thing. We're going to send a large offering to Johnny to keep helping. I, I want to yeah, – Samaritan's Purse is a great place to send. Uh, I wouldn't send it to any government entity at all, but somewhere, because John even said, I, I can't find any government here. Uh, you know, so that's what's so sad. So don't buy the lie. People need help. And uh, so we're going to do what we can now financially for them. So we will be sending some uh, money there, a good, a good chunk. I'm just letting you know. And I've already let Johnny know it. And, uh, and I just I told him I appreciate you being our feet right now because we can't get there. And uh, we've been through hurricanes, we've been through uh, floods, but we we all can rebuild, and we can we still got our land, you know. And but <clears throat> and that they got down, uh, they got over a thousand people still. Uh, and this is Johnny talking, still missing, and they're, they're they're in the in the water, in the rivers, and they there's nobody searching, and that's it should be that way. They should have dogs up there. They should be working it. So I'm just saying that from my heart. Amen. Our, our hearts hurt for people because we've gone through it. You know, we've been, we've been beat up some, but, uh, you know, we weren't beat up that bad, right? I got a lot to say this morning and a short time to do it. I had a, a lunch this week with a couple of real cowboys, and um, I, just, I love them, and I just don't want to mention names, but when, when I finished uh, a day or so later, one of the cowboys sent me, a young man sent me a message, Pastor, there isn't much I can say about the word that you don't know. I wanted to say a few things yesterday, but the Lord said, hush and listen. When you're young, you should do that. Uh, he do that. He said he do that sometime until this morning. Amen. I could preach right now what he said. You and my pastor have led and guided me in the way more times than I could say. All those lunches we had was building me quietly just to, let, uh, just to get to listen to the conversation, set me up for success daily, as well as my future. And there are several quotes that I'm reminded of in times of despair that come to mind from Pastor Jerry that make me smile, pull my hat down tight, and keep moving. I've wanted to quit more times than I can count. When you shot the finger at your drummer, walk in on stage, <clears throat> it's going to tell you what's and that did happen. As a matter of fact, it was with both hands. Uh, and it was Mike. It wasn't there. Uh, it made me feel like we're human. And God is not mad, but gives us that grit to make it through. The meek shall inherit the earth. I've had the honor to speak over several people's lives as we laid them in the ground, not understanding why. They asked me over the last uh, three and a half years. But I hear you say, Pastor, somebody got to do something. I could go on all day, but my kids are tied up in a boxing match in the living room. I don't like long text. The favor, the father favors the one who favors the father. Just a few to mention. They stick with me, Pastor, and I'm honored to have you in my life, my family as well. We couldn't have made it without all those lunches. Love you. I receive messages like that all week. And then I had a lady last night that sent me a message. Many of you know her. I called her by name. Her husband passed eight years ago. She said, I've been following your journey, and I want you to know that, uh, man, it's been good, and I'm learning. And uh, I'm, the grief and the sorrow and the things of that nature, they, they do go away and they come back. So it's been, it has been that journey. So I, I promised myself I'd preach my way out of this, knowing this. I could preach up here about success and, and uh, victory and name it and claim it and, and everybody's going to get healed and all this other stuff, but that only touched two or three people in this house. But if I talk about sorrow, pain, hurt, it's going to reach more people in here because we've been there. About, it was in 2014, I think is when it was, 2015, my sister, who was, uh, her feet had unfolded under from muscular dystrophy, and, and her weight had gained, and she slipped and fell and broke her femur. 
When she broke her femur, the pain was so severe, she lost her eyesight. I've never seen anything like this. But I have friends that went to Alabama with me to see her. I went to the hospital to see Sandy, and she couldn't see nothing. She was absolutely blind from the pain. The pain blinded her. She couldn't see. And I would have to hand her drinks, and I'd have to hand her food. And I stayed with her night after night in the hospital. And she'd call my name out. She could, and I, I asked the doctor, is my sister blind? He said, she is, but she's not. She's blind because of the pain. The pain has been so severe, it's blinded her. And I thought to myself, how many times in our lives have we been blinded by pain that we can't see the goodness of God, the goodness of friends, the goodness of, of uh, our, our family around us, and I will fight, and I mentioned this yesterday, and I tell you, I will fight pain. Uh, you're going to have pain, but you've got to fight it and realize you can't set in, gear, uh, in neutral. You've got to press on, and you can't let the pain win. Amen. You got to pray because pain is normal. Can you get an amen? You're going to, you're going to feel pain. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have that our culture embraces entertainment. We pursue pleasure at all cost. Boats. Most, <laughs> and let me tell you, I've been in jail. Take the boat. <laughs> Listen, you can spend a month in jail or five days on a boat. Take the boat. I'm just saying. Ain't nothing like showering with strangers. Just, just throwing it out there. Most of life is spent, but I, I loved it. Still, it was great. I hope you say it at the next service, and then I'll get up and say this. Uh, most, <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't have two year in prison. No, you're, you're correct. No, it's good. Most of life is spent avoiding sorrow and pain. We do what we can. Even when we get bad news on TV, the newscasts often conclude with a little funny story at the end. Almost all of them do that now. Uh, the mantra of many today is something like this. Blessed are those who laugh their way through life. And I love laughter. Some of us will do almost anything to stifle our sadness and turn away from tears. And yet, if we're honest, we'd have to admit that we sometimes feel like Proverbs 14:13. Even in laughter, the heart may ache, and joy may end in grief. I'm already rolling, Mike. There it is. Even in laughter, the heart may ache, and joy may end in grief. You know, you can laugh and still be hurting. And joy may end in grief. Matthew 5, 4 was sent to me this week by a friend, and he just sent it to me. And when, I, when he sent it to me, it almost made me mad. You, don't preach to the preacher. I used to get on to Lori all the time about that. Don't use my stuff against me. I was saying it to them. But she'd throw it back up in my face. Matthew 5, 4, blessed are those who mourn. Jesus said it. For they will be comforted. Of course, we know this is one of the Beatitudes. Blessed are those that mourn. The word mourn there is actually the word for grief. To grieve. To feel sorrow. To, to struggle. You know, when you read through... The Beatitudes, you pick up on blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That, that, that broken in spirit simply means spiritual bankruptcy. To recognize where you're at in life and realize you really need God more than you ever thought. I posted this morning this statement, the haughty heart and the tearless eyes should be foreign to the Christ follower. When you're following Jesus, uh, there's no place for arrogance in your life, and you should allow your eyes, if they need to, to tear up. Amen. And to flow. There's nothing wrong with that. The word mourn, blessed are they that mourn, mourn, Jesus said. It's one of the strongest words in the Greek that could be used to grieve or wail as one who had a loved one who passed. It's a deep sorrow that causes the soul to ache and the heart to break. You know, Jesus is not talking about complainers. He's not talking about moaners, but about those who are gripped by grief as seen in Psalm 34, 18 that we talked about last week in the message. If your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. And there's times you feel like you got kicked in the gut. And I want to tell you, it could be the loss of an animal. I've, I've lost, you know, when Duke died, I, Duke didn't die. I had to put Duke down. And I put him, I, drove, I took him out in the woods. That dog brought you to church. But I put him in a wheelbarrow. I had to take him out in the woods. And after it happened, I said, after I put him down, I said to myself, I'll never do that again. Because the grief hit me. I stayed in the woods and I wailed. I, I couldn't get over how it affected me that I had to put my own dog down. 
And I, I knew as a country boy, that's what you did. But then I just got hold of the vet, and then I gave them shots now, and I, I do anything I can. And, and you know, I had a 140-pound uh, cane corso, and I tried to hold a pillow over his head, and he bit me. But, it, you know, <laughs> you, you'll try anything. But, but, but that, that grief, it affects you when you've loved someone or something for a long time. And it just grabs hold of you. So when you get kicked in the gut, God helps you. Uh, I was out with, with HD this week, and I, I told him, I said, one of the things I realized I'm doing, I'm breathing more now. I'm breathing deeper. I'm breathing louder. I, I can hear myself breathing because i got to catch my breath. Because you, you feel it inside of you. If you don't, if you don't do it, uh, see, lamenting, lamentations. You, you read books in the Bible, you don't even realize why is the book lamentation. It's a lament. It's Jeremiah crying. It's the crying prophet. All through Scripture, you read about prophets who wept and wept over the nation and, and, and wept over people. So to lament the losses in your life is so important. You need to. You need to lament the loss of your house, Brian. That's, that, that's heartbreaking. You, you cry over that. You get alone sometimes, and you say, you know what? I lost something. It's nothing wrong with letting it go. And we've all experienced excruciating pain at some point in our lives. And if you haven't, it, it's coming. Hey, it's on its way. 1 Peter 4.12 says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are su you're suffering as though something strange happened to you. Don't act like it. Why me? Yeah, listen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It rains on the just and the unjust. Some of you have gone through or are going through right now some health issues that make you afraid about the future. Perhaps you've experienced a relational rupture with someone and it's eating your heart out because you've missed them or you don't know why it happened or maybe you've lost a loved one through death and you still cry yourself to sleep at night. And You can relate to the words in Psalms chapter 6, verse 6. David said, I'm worn out from groaning. I said, it just flat wore me out. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and, and drench my couch with tears. I, I had a, a nurse who was a part of our church for years send me a message. said, Pastor, make sure you, you take some uh, protein, some insure, something, because I promise you, you're not eating right now. You need to take it because it's going to wear you out. And it does. It'll wear you out and wears you down. And eventually, you know, we're going to make a turn. We're going to come back. Last week, I, I threw the, the stages of grief at you so that you would understand this is what we all go through. I've used it for years. It's shock and denial. At first, you can't believe it happened. You just can't believe I, I don't care if it was a, a home destroyed, a, a loved one lost, a, a good dog. Pain and guilt. Pain and guilt to come all over you, and, and you feel guilty because you think, I didn't get to say goodbye. Or maybe I had an argument. Uh, before it happened or, or something, and, and it just kind of, and then the pain, it just doesn't seem to go away. And then there's anger and there's bargaining with God. You'll actually bargain with God. I held my wife's hand for three hours, and I bargained with God. I didn't even realize I was doing it. I just trying to get her back. He said, If God would have told me, Jerry, I, I'm going to let you marry this girl on the 25th of September, 2004. But in 20 years, on September the 8th, I'm taking her back. Would you marry her? I'd do it again. You can relate to how David felt. He wept and he drenched his couch with tears. When his son Absalom died, his son was a scoundrel. His son tried to take the kingdom. His son tried to split things up. His son tried to kill his own daddy. But when Absalom was hung in a tree by his hair and Joab threw darts through his heart and the word got back to the king that your son who had been trying to split your kingdom is dead, the scripture says in 2 Samuel 18, 33, the king was shaken and he went up to his room over the gateway and he wept. All through scripture, you see where heartbreak and grieving comes in. You got to deal with it. You got to realize that we're all going to have a time of, of, of blessed are those that Grieve. Blessed are those that 
mourn. Blessed are those that are in sorrow. They're going to get comforted. But first, there's got to be an honesty about this in the, the lamenting. Genesis 23 tells us about uh, Abraham. Abraham's wife, Sarah, died. Now, we know that Abraham more than, had more than one woman. But Sarah died. Sarah's the one that laughed. She laughed. When, God, when Abraham went and said, Sarah, God told us we're going to have a kid. No, what was this Abraham? He's only 100 year old. You hear me, Brother Hicks? He was only 100 years old. And he, and he told Sarah, we're going to have a child. Sarah laughed. Let me help you ladies out. Our masculinity is fragile. <laughs> you know, we, we act like we're tough and all, and we, we, we can handle it. But when it comes to intimacy and relationship, don't laugh. <laughs> I could go further, but I won't. But don't laugh. I'm just saying, don't laugh at him. Either way, somehow he got the grit to get on with it. He loved her. He loved her. And the scripture says when she died, he came to mourn and to weep for her. He was affected by her. Jesus wept over Lazarus. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Jesus wept. And again, understand Jesus is God. God cried. Uh, when I read that, it, it really hits me. Ecclesiastes 7, Solomon said, It's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For death is the destiny of everyone. The living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter because a sad face is good for the heart. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. Here's a man who had 700 concubines and 300 wives. And he said, let me tell you, I know a little bit about pleasure. It flees. It's gone. But you're going to learn something with a heart. Patsy, you okay? I know you can't imagine having that many husbands, can you? <laughs> what he's saying here, it's better to go to a funeral than to a party because sadness is actually good for you. You learn more at a funeral. It's reality. It slaps you in the face. The rest is, is, fro is frolic. It's, it's foolishness. It fades away. Amen. It's just fun for a little bit, but when I go to a funeral, I learn something. I picked up on something here. Or, or maybe you're weeping because you, you want to have a child and you're still waiting. Your heart is breaking just like Hannah's. Scripture says in Samuel, in bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. I've been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Grief affected her so much. So, listen, God heard her. Don't, God gets near those who weep. He hears a wailing woman. He hears grief, sorrow. He moves toward that. The earth is full of it. So I know because of that, God moves here, and he, and he blessed her with a little boy named Samuel, who became one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament, who anointed David, the giant slayer. Ah, where did it all start? She cried. She cried. She wasn't afraid to tear up. Psalm 56, 8 gives us an assurance that one day, you number my wonders, you put my tears into a bottle. When you get to heaven, when you get to heaven, all the tears that you, you God's going to wipe away the last ones as you enter. But then you're going to see some bottles. And, you know, God could put it all in one great big bottle. But there's something about a 24-pack. Amen. And to see all the bottles. God forbid you get to heaven and not have a bottle. Or two or three or four. All the tears that you wept and you cried. And God answered those prayers through those tears. I can't pray and laugh. I can't do it. I, when I'm laughing, I can't. That, that, it, there's no way I pray. It's, it's, I'm, and there's more of a rejoice. But when I'm weeping, I can pray. I can talk to God. I can be honest with him at that moment. Jesus can relate to us. Hebrews 4 tells us, amen. Let me find it here. 
Where was there? Hebrews 4, 15 says that Jesus sympathized with our weakness. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like, tempted like we are, yet he was without sin. He didn't sin, but he was tempted. But he can feel for us. He knows us. Isaiah 53 he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering. Amen. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. I remind myself, God, you carry my sorrow. You carry. It, it, it's reminded to me, and again, people have been preaching to me. Remember, Pastor, they throw it back at me. I know it. He's been carrying me. He's picked me up in the sands, and he's been walking me through it. And he's been doing it to you. Mr. Ed, he's been carrying you. That's what God has been doing for us. So no matter if you're weeping over the state of the world or crying over the condition of others or lamenting a loss, remember, the comfort is coming. I don't know when. That's the thing. You know, I, I told somebody that the, the Scripture, and I'll probably read it here in a minute, but it says that a weeping may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. And H, H and I were discussing, it was you, huh? And he said, well, I think, it's, uh, I think it's literally in the morning. And I think, no. Because I've made it till the morning and I'm still crying. You know, and the next day I'm still crying. But I realize that eventually joy is coming. I, because I've seen it in my own life. I have to believe it. I got, I, yeah. There's nothing the world has offered me. I can't get anything off the news. I, I can't get anything else out of another book. But this book here tells me that joy will come. It tells me that comfort will come. Amen. It's on its way. So some quick thoughts for you. First, God draws near to those who cry. Those who are hurt and those who are sorrow, we read it last week, Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the broken heart and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God says, I, I want to move close to you. Amen. Comfort's coming. I'm, I get there. God uses suffering and sorrow to draw us to himself. We, we've learned, let me just use Pastor Joseph here real quick. Our hurricanes help teach this man how to work with wood. I, I, I guarantee you, he might knew what a ruler was, but now he knows how to use one. He knows how to use saws, and he buys equipment now. It was through the hard times that we've learned, and, and we've prepared ourselves. It's, it's not the good times that you learn. It's the, it's the hard times. So we grow faster in the hard times. Our pain helps us minister to others. Imagine, imagine in our own lives how many people that we've been able to minister to because of what we've gone through. When you've gone through something, you're able to help somebody. Amen. If you, if it's whether, whether it's cancer or death or, 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 or bankruptcy, you're able to help somebody in, in life. Very important. I'm going to say this to you. You'll never know if Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. Corinthians tells us, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. I, I look for people that, that's gone through things. Again, last night, it was late, and I get this message from this lady. Eight years ago, her husband passed. He was one of my closest friends. Eight years ago. And she said, I'm still struggling. I'm still struggling. And I'm watching you and I'm following you. And I'm saying, God, if there's anything I can do to help somebody else, I've only been at it a little over a month now. But it feels like an eternity. It feels long. So, hmm. we got to hold on to the promises. Job 16, even now my witness is in heaven. My, close your eyes just for a minute. Let me just read to you. Unless you just want to take snap notes, you can. But even now, my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. My intercessor is my friend. As my eyes pour out tears to God. Isaiah said, the sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people. The Lord has spoken. In Psalms, it says, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night. But rejoicing comes in the morning. Again, lamentations. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to the children of men. Revelation. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Last points here, McKenna. What if you can't change it? Then you have to accept it. You have to say, I get it, Lord. I get it. 
I get it. Habakkuk, and I close with Habakkuk. Last chapter of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 17. Habakkuk knew the Babylonians were going to punish the Jewish people. He knew it was going to happen. God told him. And he knew bad things were coming. And he prayed. And he sought God. And he asked for it to turn around. And then he said, though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. In other words, he's literally telling us, what if your investments disappeared tomorrow? Hmm. What do you do when you're wiped out? What would you do if the stock market imploded? What if it totally tanked and went to zero? Investments gone. Pensions destroyed. 401k wiped out. What then? What do, you, what do you do? How do you face it? What if your children end up in jail? What if you lose your job? What if safety net fails? What if you run out of food? What if you can't pay your bills? What if hurricanes destroy everything you have? What if your loved ones never come to Christ? What if the doctor says it's terminal? What if, what if your spouse has a heart attack? And you're left alone. Too many believers serve the God of the good times. They just want a good time God. That's why they go to these churches with fluff. And I'm not putting them down. Maybe they're getting some. But they like the smoke and they like the lights. And they, they like uh, the, the, uh, the glamour of it. And it's 20 minutes in. And it's five minutes of worship. And 10 minutes of a sermonette. And, and then grab a big offering and send them out the door and bring the next group in. There are churches all over America doing that now. He's just the God of the good times. Preachers preaching on screen. They serve the God. They love him and praise him when all is going well. But what will you do when hard times come? If all you have is the God of the good times, my friend, you don't have the God of the Bible. Sometimes the, free, the fig tree does not bud. Sometimes there are no grapes on the vine. Sometimes the crops fail. Sometimes the fields produce no food. Sometimes there's no sheep in the pen. Sometimes there's no cattle in the stalls. What do you do then? You can get angry. You can get angry at God, or you can give up. You can let the pain blind you. Or you can do like Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 4, when he said, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. And Paul picked up on it in the book of Romans. It said, the just shall live by faith. I, it ain't my feelings. My, my feelings may be tears falling from, but, but by faith, I'm saved. By faith, my loved ones are well. I'll see them again. By faith, I got to go on. By faith, I got a future. Often we mistake faith in our feelings. Faith isn't about my feelings, much less about my circumstances. Faith chooses to believe when it would be easier to stop believing. Habakkuk said, I'm going to wait patiently. I'm going to wait patiently. The last verse of the book of Habakkuk says, The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of deer. He enables me to go to the heights. I watched, I wish I could have sent this. I watched a video this week of deer running on the cliffs. I've been in Colorado, Cheryl, and I've watched the deer. I was on a train going underneath uh, out of Canyon City, Royal Gorge. I looked up, and there was a ram on the side of the mountain. And he's, he's running on the mountain, and I'm going, ain't no way. And he's bouncing, and his feet were like hind's feet, just running along the mountain. And then I read what Habakkuk said, because he's seen it. He said, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. There's something about being able to stand. The book of Ephesians, Paul said, after you've done everything you can to stand, stand. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't let the pain blind you. Keep right on going. You can't stop. There are people that need you to win so that when they go through it, you can help them win.
Some of you have gone through it, and I've watched you. I observed you, and I received your strength. I've taken you in, and I said, look how they've done it. I've done your funerals of your loved ones, and I've mourned and cried with you, but not like you because I couldn't feel like you. Now I can. But on the flip side of all that, I've gained from you. And I hope somebody gains from me someday. So we press on. And we say, blessed. Everybody say, blessed. Blessed are those that mourn. Bless you. Bless you for crying. Bless you for feeling the way you do. Because you love someone. Because you love something. Amen. You cared that much. Bless you. Comfort's coming. Comfort's coming. You ever crawled under a comforter? <laughs> I got one on my bed. I'll crank that AC down, get it good and cold, and I slide on that comforter with the fan blowing. It's comfortable. Blessed are those. Don't worry about your crying. Go ahead and let your mascara run, sir. You need Jesus. Amen. Bow your head, church. Father, I thank you for a great group of people. Those that are watching, I know that in sadness there will be gladness. Somewhere down the road, God, you're going to bring it. Whether it be in the night, in the morning after the night. But there has to be comfort ahead. There has to be. You've not designed us to stay in sorrow, to live in pain, to grieve forever. You promised us an abundant life. So help us press through. Help us go on. Help us see the joys in life and the goodness of God in the land of the living. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I got up for pastor. It's very good. I do believe his messages are getting more and more real, which I didn't think it was possible as long as I've been here. But because uh, I listened to, even though I was gone last week, I listened yesterday to last week's message. It was heartbreaking not to be able to be here for pastor on his first Sunday back. But man, what a powerful message last week and this week. Uh, and very relatable to even if you've not gone through sorrow or pain, you will go through sorrow or pain in your lifetime. So hold on to these messages and cling to them. Take notes uh, so that you can have these references. If we have our servant leaders come forward. Uh, if you'd like a tither offering envelope, it's in the back of the pew. Uh, go ahead and grab one of those, fill it out. Uh, allow your obedience to come through when it comes to your finances and your uh, the sacrifice of your offering. Um, yeah, go fill those out right behind you, uh, and then we'll go ahead and say this. As we give today, we'll believe in God for jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates, returns, debts demolished, roll to receive, favor, and success to the kingdom. Amen. On a completely different note, I just want to say that if you like cruises, that's great. That's good for you. Good for you. That I didn't tell you before. So I've been I've lost 40 pounds leading up to this cruise. And and that was the light at the end of the tunnel was to eat on this cruise. Well, the day before I left for this cruise, I got food poisoning. I did not tell you that. And so the first two days of this cruise, my stomach was all kinds of jacked up. So it took some of the fun out of the food part of it. But anyways, uh, I do have a few announcements for you. Uh, 
up till uh, November 17th, where if you need a uh, help with your Thanksgiving meals and stuff, we're providing meals or signups in the back. Uh, if you'd like to give toward that, there should be signups or lists, grocery lists, to be able to, to go purchase and help to the families who do need. Uh, if they're not back there, they will be soon, but it, that's what it's on my paper right now. Uh, also, that's not on here, Frank. Do you want to say something about your bucket in the back there? There you go. For deer. <laughs> I knew where you were going. I knew where you were going. That's only a 150 yard shot off my back porch to that garden. Just saying. <laughs> well, I'm going to say it. November. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's true. If, if I see a deer, I'm just saying. We have seen a lot of deer on the property this year, which I'm pretty excited about. We don't like to shoot the ones up front. That's our looking deer. The ones in the back will kill. That's what, uh, how I see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's going on. In case you missed it on uh, good old Facebook or, or YouTube, uh, they're taking donations for God's Gardens. You can send it in, hol or holywild.net slash give. Uh, the ladies are having November 9th, they're having their tea and testimony. Sign up starting to back for that. Uh, a lot of ladies in our house are sharing their testimonies for that. Uh, so it's going to be a special day for them. Uh, again, that is November 9th at 10 a.m. Uh, and then uh, Forge is going to Hot Hearts in January. So make sure get your students signed up for that as soon as possible. Don't wait till the last minute. Uh, this year, it's a one-day event, which is, I think is kind of neat. So you don't have to worry about the overnight for the on this side of things, but uh, so, uh, but that's going on in January, so make sure you get your students signed up for that, and of course, October's Pastor Appreciation Month, um, just pray about how you want to celebrate that in, in, in your way, uh, whether it's serving the church, but financially giving a pastor, or whatever, just pray about it. Uh, but we want to honor our pastor for sure. And then something as well that I have not sent them, October 26th, I believe, is that a Saturday? Thank you. October 26th, which is not this Saturday, but next Saturday, we are having our first roundtable breakfast uh, where both campuses are coming together. The men's are coming together to have a breakfast. Uh, so make sure, guys, you plan for that Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. We'll be in the fellowship hall. Uh, both campuses coming together. We're also going to do something a little bit different, which I'm pretty excited about. We're going to do the breakfast, and then we're going to do a what I'm calling a decade panel which we're going to have a panel of guys from each decade, and we're going to ask questions like, what is biblical manhood, and different questions, and explore, and how the different perspectives play a role in that in age. So uh, it's going to be interesting. So guys, plan on showing up. I'll have a sign up one day only next week to sign up so that we can make sure we have enough food and breakfast. It's going to be delicious. Uh, of course, my grandmother-in-law, Miss Linda Rich, is going to be helping with the breakfast and her ladies. So you know it's going to be good. You know it's going to be good. So make sure you guys be praying about this week. Sign up next week. If you've never been to a roundtable, try to make this one on a Saturday. It's going to be really good. Uh, I'm very excited about it. And then fishing and pizza. I don't think that's a month paper. That's okay. Uh, so that's third through sixth graders at the other campus. Uh, it's after church on the 20th. They're just going to be hanging out, fishing, and eating pizza. So that's going to be fun. Uh, anything else I may have missed? You get Swap today. And then for seniors with a purpose, 
uh, right after church in the fellowship hall and two or more Tuesday for those who want to be a part of our prayer warriors on Tuesday nights. And we appreciate them. And all the testimonies that have come out of their prayers is pretty amazing. Uh, so if you need prayer, put it in a box in the back. If you'd like to come be a part of that team, show up Tuesday at 7 o'clock, right? All right, would you stand with me? On a lighter note, I need you to pray for four men who are going to be representing a little country church in a golf tournament in a couple of Mondays uh, that we beat everybody. Uh, but it's going to a good cause. It's going to FCA for the schools. Uh, and so we're just going to go support them and have a little fun in doing it. So, um, yeah, it'll be fun. Anyways, all right, let's pray. Father, we are... Uh, we're just excited to be in your presence. We thank you for our pastor and thank you for who he is, not only as a pastor, but as a human being uh, and how you are preaching through him and through the trials of his life to reach so many in this place, Lord. Uh, it's real. And this is where your truth, this is where your word becomes even more real in the lives of those who can relate to the situations that are going on and the trials. And even if you haven't yet, it's going to happen at one point in your life where we're going to have to deal with these things. And Lord, help us uh, find your goodness in these areas, Father. No matter what we're going through, whatever trials we're going through, Lord, there is goodness because you are good. And we thank you for allowing us to bow our heads and talk to you and have a relationship with the creator of the universe, to be able to have your word to draw near to, to find uh, some kind of contentment and peace, Lord. Uh, you give us so many different avenues to you, Lord, and we thank you for that. And we love you so much and allow us to, to honor you as we leave this place this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys have a great week. We love you all.